Hey everybody, my name is Angie Murenga. It's another Sunday, beautiful Sunday. So welcome to the Sunday Sermon and you're watching Just Angie. Today I want to talk about trust and trust is such an important thing and I can talk about it on so many avenues, you know, and it's almost, it's like lighting my fire. But I'll start by showing you. So I've just recently come from, I, I came back from, 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 I attended, let me just start, the International Pastors and Leaders Conference um, in Dallas in this year, 2018. And when I was going, I usually, I'm very old school, so I usually have like uh, my, my journal. So a lot of people take notes on their phones. Sometimes I do, but I always, there's something about writing down. And then I always feel like my journals are part of legacy. So this is the journal I went with. And, and I wondered why, because some of them are not finished. I was like, why? So this is the one the Lord told me to pick. He told me to pick the one on, on trust. And it says, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. And it's, you can see, it's like Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8. So I was like, okay. So I didn't understand the significance, but there was significance in it. So I want to talk about trust today. Um, I'll read the scripture a bit um, Maybe I can read it. But it says, Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8, in the Amplified Version, Amplified C, it says, Most blessed is the man who believes in, trusts in, and relies on the Lord, and whose hope and confidence the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spread out its roots by the river, and it shall not see and fear when the heat comes. But its leaf shall be green, it shall not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought, nor shall it cease yielding its fruit. I mean, powerful scripture. You know, it just said here, you know, Jeremiah 17, 17, they just said, blessed is the man. That's it. But I went in, I said, let me read about it. But it says, most blessed is the man or, or guest or woman, that means humanity, who believes in and trusts in and relies on the Lord. And we have to believe in, we have to trust, and we have to rely on the Lord, whose hope and confidence, I love the emphasis, the Lord is. You know, and before we say what will happen to this person, I think the most important thing is that we have to trust. And if you have been walking with God for a long time, or even a short time, or I know that there are many of us where we feel like God has disappointed us, that's not it, you know. The, 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 sometimes we focus on, on, on our own understanding of of issues and the things that we've been through life, and that's not supposed to be the way it's supposed to be. What we're supposed to do is believe in God, trust in God, rely on God, have hope and confidence in God, in his plan, in his vision. I think the problem is we want our vision, we want our way, we want our plans to succeed. You know, we have our own understanding of, of the issues and situations and, that are surrounding us instead of taking God's understanding. And he said anyway, he will reveal to us what he wants to reveal and what he doesn't want to reveal is not going to tell us. But you see, I, I, sometimes he'll tell me, especially because I really like to know, he tells me, I'll tell you on a lead to no basis, you know, just relax. And I, I started feeling, yeah, I think my trust has waned, you know, and this was a pickup. And I, I, the one thing also that's come out of, of my, my, the last like six or seven weeks is the word of God. We have to keep hearing the word of God. We have to keep hearing it over and over again because we are reminded of things that we have forgotten um, in the word or we are, we are, we are, our identity is affirmed because I kept feeling this whole trust issue is, do you believe in God? Yes. Do you believe God loves you? Yes. Then what I'm telling you is you must rely on me. You must trust in me. You must um, have your hope and confidence in me. That's it. You just have to, it's like almost, it's like a blind trust. And then it reminds me about um, Romans where it says you will not conform to the ways of this world. Do not, do not conform to the ways of this world. Have a, a renewed mind, a, remu a renewed mind, a shift in mind and a shift in mindset, you know, and, and let that be transformation. Let that be, be transformative for you and, and don't conform. And then you will be able to know God's good, perfect and pleasing will for your life. That one is even saying that. So we have to trust on God. You have to trust in God, on God. You have to rely on him. You have to put your hope and confidence in him. It doesn't matter how maybe you feel in your way that he has failed you. He hasn't failed you. He's God and he's still on his throne and he has a plan. And you know, I'm always saying that we're the only creation that speaks back to the creator. You know, anything that is created, this was created, it can't speak. This was created, it can't speak. Everything around me was created by somebody, but it doesn't speak back to whoever created it. But we have a, an uncanny ability to speak to the creator, to think that we know everything, how our lives are supposed to go, what is supposed to happen. You know, it, it, it sometimes it makes me laugh. It's like even when I watch... Um, 
Let's put what good kata. There's a place where um, the, the 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 children have become so good and they're winning games. Before Coach Kata came, nobody was winning anything. They were a hot mess. But now that they are winning, the parents are there having this, I don't know what to call it. They, 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 are, they are saying, people are coming to watch my son play. You can't lock up the gym. And I'm thinking, your son couldn't even play a few months ago. Your son couldn't play. Nobody was watching him. He had even no future. His future in that part of the hood was death or jail. I mean, what? It's entitlement. That's the thing. We feel like we're entitled. We're entitled to, to the life that we feel we should have. You know, don't be like that. Trust in God. Rely in, on God. Have hope and confidence in God. Pray to God. Trust in God. Walk with God. Flow with what God is doing in your life. You know, because he gave you life. It's not the other way around. Your life, we always say, your life, my life is not my own. It's not yours. He brought you into this world. How come now you have opinions, you have entitlements, you have um, direction? How? You're created. Your created being was brought in this world with a birthday and you have a death day. You have a day where you're going to leave. You can't have um, entitlement issues with God. You have to trust in him. You have to rely on him. You have to have confidence in him. You have to have hope. You have to pray. You have to, I don't see now, just go around being blatantly. Just pray. Pray, say, God, this is the way I'm going. Please lead me, guide me. What do you want me to do in this situation? How do you want me to handle this situation? I'm trusting in you, Father. And even when we feel supposedly that he has let us down, I don't think that's the truth. You have to wait for the whole story to unfold. And then we will probably be aha. So this is why this had to happen. I keep referring to this. I think I need to watch it and also come and share about it when I remember Steve Fertig shared something that, that, something, that something happened that we feel like we shouldn't have happened. But in retrospect, it had to happen. That's what he preached about. It had to happen. Then I had somebody also so referring to it. That there are things in our lives that at the time, they look like they're crazy and like, where is God? But it had to happen. Yeah, why? This is his... It's his play. It's his creation. Where is creation? He's unfolding his life for us. And we have to be in a position of trust. You know, it's like I'm always saying, if you just arrive somewhere and tell kids, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Nobody even asks where we're going. The guys just jump into the car and say, let's move. You know, and that's why God talks about the, the kingdom of God is like little children. They just trust. They trust you have a good plan for them. Yeah, okay, where are we going? And they're not really concerned. As long as we're going somewhere, let's go. So I think that's how we, we have to be. Sometimes I also laugh at myself. Let me now read now what it says will happen to the person who trusts. It reminds me of Psalm 1, verse 1 to 3. It says, it shall be those who trust in the, in the Lord, I guess, who put their hope in the Lord, we shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spread out its roots by the river. And it shall not see and fear when the heat comes. So heat is coming, but we will not fear. We shall not see. We shall not fear this heat, you know. We will see God. You know, I love that. That's powerful. That we shall not see and fear when heat comes. So heat comes, but we will not see it. And we're not going to fear it. So don't give in to fear. I think trust really ha goes hand in hand with fear. Don't give in to fear, you know. W give, give in to. So the Bible says you cannot see or fear. Give in to fixing your eyes on God. That's what I feel like. You know, it says that fix your eyes on God, who is the, on Jesus, who is the, 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 the author and the, the, the creator of your life, you know, the perfecter of your faith. He, he is the perfect God. Keep your eyes fixed on him. And I think I love also Psalm 27, which says that, that he keeps in perfect peace those whose eyes are stared on him. So here it's even talking that you can't see or you cannot even hear. Kumi, you can even hear fear. We need to do some research. So you cannot see. It shall not see, and it shall not fear when the heat comes. So whatever comes your way, you will not see it, you will not fear it. You will only see God. And you will not fear because you are trusting in the Lord and trusting that this whole situation is going to work out well. And even it reminds me of, I think it's Genesis 50, 20, when Joseph said that whatever they meant for harm, you have turned into good. That's what it's saying. You can't fear when the heat comes. Because even if the heat comes, whatever situation has come, at the end... He will turn it into good. And even if it came to harm you, it is possible for God to turn it around and it becomes good. And it says here, its leaf shall be green. So you'll be green. Um, I think green is of, in, in someone talks about the healing of nations. So you will be green and it shall not be anxious. You will not be anxious and full of care in the year of drought. 
nor shall it cease yielding fruit. You know, almost, I always say the word of God is such an oxymoron. You will not fear drought, neither will you stop yielding, will you stop yielding or bearing fruit, you know. Even those trees, I think in, in Psalm 1 and even in, in, in Revelation, it says that the trees are planted by the river, which is the source, which is the source of life, that is God, and they are, they are, they are, their leaves are green for the healing of nations, and they bear fruit in and out of season. So you will be fruitful all the time. You know, we've got to trust. I, I think I have to do a part two of this because I, I want to do one just even about money. You know, even when, you know, I love the fact that, um, like Mike Murdoch says, it's not easy to give away money. People think it is, but it's not. But you, it's not an easy thing to give away money. I said, even if anybody tells you it is, you, they're lying to you. So you, you know, you have to, I think I want to do another thought, one on trust even in terms of money. You've got to trust God. You've got to trust that he has a plan. You've got to, as long as you have been obedient, because that's another thing. I find people um, are asking God for, for, to, to do things for them, but they, it's not like they've been fully uh, serving God or fully acknowledging God, you know? Why did God allow this to happen? Maybe because your life was not submitted to him. Maybe because you're not listening to him. Where is the obedience? Where is the instruction? Reminds me of Saul. Saul has come to my head. The, the people said they want a king. God said, okay, where's the king? Here he is, Saul. So they didn't want God's plan. He said, okay, where is Saul? He brought Saul, I went to them, go and lead the people. Saul did his own things. It, until now, now when they were finished with Saul, you know, says, like, now when they were finished with Saul, now he said, now, do you want my king? The one I had chosen for you, yeah, okay, there we go. So I find some people questioning God when they, they don't even refer to that God, they don't trust in that God, they don't acknowledge that God, but when it's convenient, now you want to say, oh, where is God? Yeah, where, where have you been? You know, align your life. Things have to align. Shift. Align your life. Say, God, here I am. I will trust you. Walk me through this situation. Show me who you are. Get me through this. You know, but there has to be an alignment of your life as well with this God. You cannot just be hurling words at him and saying how he's not existing and all sorts of things that you're saying and then, then blame him as well in the same sentence. You know, you, you have to develop a relationship with God. You have to walk with God. You have to to do his work. You have to be obedient. And you know, doing his work doesn't mean we all join a church. No. Wherever you are and whatever you're called to do, just make sure that it is in line with God's will. And God is very simple, I think. The first thing is that he loves everybody. It says that God is love. It says the beginning of wisdom is the fear and the awe of God. So put him in his rightful place, you know. My friend Kandisa who loves that statement. Put him in his rightful place, you know. Submit to his authority. Listen to what he tells you. Uh, be a person of prayer, a person of reading the word to know more about this God or listening to messages about him, you know. Meditate, be still. There are so many things that you need to do. But anyway, my story started with trust. This is a season where you have to trust in God. It's not just a season. I think it's for life. Keep continuously, I feel like continuously keep reminding yourself that you have to trust God and that you have to trust, you have to rely on him. You have to hope in him, you have to have confidence in him, and you have to believe in him, and you have to believe that he, he cares about you, he cares about the situation, and if you will humble yourself and, and submit and say, here I am, Lord, um, what do you want with my life? That lots of amazing and great things will happen for you. So God bless you. Let me lead you to Christ, uh, because that's another trust issue as well, um, is that you since he's talking about that this person is blessed and fortunate, that let's get saved so that we can put our trust and our life in the hands of this God. So please say after me, Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my life, to be Lord and Savior of my life. I want to put my trust completely in you, and I want you to teach me how to do that. But this day, I trust you enough to give my life to you. I know you gave it to me first, but I'm giving it back to you. I'm submitting myself to you and saying you are the Lord and Savior of my life. Show me what my life was, is meant to be and what my life was all about. And I submit to you and I decree that you are the Lord and Savior of my life from this day and from this moment. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you said that, that's the salvation prayer. Find a good church. Uh, find a, a family of church, a, a family of faith that you can grow um, in and that you can learn. It's important sometimes, I think even if, you want, if they have discipleship classes for you to begin, but just know that something has changed in you completely 
the Bible says, I think in Corinthians, that the old has gone and the new has come and you're a completely new person. And now allow the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God and his people on the earth to guide you uh, through the process of becoming all that God has ordained for you. Um, and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to pray about trust. You said that we should trust in you, Lord. We should rely on you. We should we should uh, believe in you. We should have our hope and confidence in you, Lord. And that's what I want to pray, that, um, that trust begins to work in us and we begin to trust in you, Lord, and to trust in your promises, trust in your word, trust that you have a good plan for us, trust that even whatever was meant for harm, that you're able to turn it into good. So let this season be about trust and your revelation on trust and even I sense in my spirit that you begin to even reveal places where we have not trusted you. Whoever's watching, Father, just begin to, to drop in their spirit things that places and situations where they don't trust you. I pray that we begin to trust you in all areas, spiritually, solically, physically, socially, financially, governmentally, geographically, and professionally, Father, that there will be issues that we, that, that we just trust you. We trust you with our lives, trust you with our purpose, trust you with our assignment, trust you with our nation, our community, our country, our families, our businesses, just be able to trust our jobs, our careers, that we will be able to trust you. And Lord, I just feel also there's somebody who just needs a hand. You know, I just feel like God is reaching out, just, just you know, reaching out, Lord, and just lift them up and bring them to a position where they can where they can trust you. And also I pray that we, we become like little children, you know, who they, when you say, let's go, they just say, okay, where are we going? And they just go. You know, they don't question. They just, they just move. And I, I feel like also somebody out there just needs to move. Make that move. Just make the move that God is asking you and trust that, um, that he's, he's with you and that it is going to be well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.